Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are continuing the saga of Apple, which is absolutely fumbling the ball so majestically when it comes to AI. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to cover the latest news, which is Apple shuffling around their leadership to try to get things headed in the right direction. But then, and you can probably guess how successful I think that this reshuffle will be based on the title of this episode, we're going to talk about a set of Hail Marys, big crazy plays that Apple could make that I think would have the potential to actually get them back into the AI fight. Now, backing up and giving some context, although it's very clear that Apple's AI strategy has been in shambles for some time now, the problems really started coming to a head, at least in terms of public awareness last Friday. AI Siri, or rather the lack of an AI Siri, was the focus of an all-hands meeting in Cupertino. Senior Director Robbie Walker hosted the meeting, as opposed to, for example, anyone involved in leading the AI team. He said that the Siri delays were ugly and embarrassing, those exact words, and he assured the team that, quote, intense personal accountability was being shared across leadership. He stopped short of announcing the departure of any senior executives, but that's obviously where a lot of the speculation went. Now Bloomberg's managing editor-in-chief Apple correspondent reports that Tim Cook has lost confidence in AI head John Giannandria. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says that Vision Pro creator Mike Rockwell has been brought across to take over the Siri project. Rockwell will report to software chief Craig Federighi, cutting Giannandria out of the project entirely. The decision was reportedly made at an off-site meeting of Apple's senior leadership held this week. Now, honestly, the names don't really matter here. The TLDR is that the executive with the ownership over Siri has been removed and replaced by the executive who delivered the Vision Pro. Kerman writes, By tapping Rockwell, Apple is betting on an executive with proven technical experience. He has demonstrated the ability to ship new products and run an engineering organization with thousands of people. Rockwell has a knack for solving problems and often takes the role of evangelist for futuristic technologies. Beyond this leadership change, though, by all accounts, there is a five-alarm fire going on at Apple. And while it would be tempting to write this off as a very weatherable storm for one of the most highly valued companies on Earth, I believe, and this might not surprise you, that Apple's failure to deliver on AI might be an existential problem. Now, before we get into my point about that, it's important to note that it is not just me. We talked last week about how John Gruber of the Daring Fireball blog had called for Tim Cook to step in and address the issue head on. He reflected on one of Steve Jobs' notoriously furious meetings when a product wasn't up to scratch, and wrote, If such a meeting hasn't yet occurred or doesn't happen soon, then I fear that's all she wrote. The ride is over. Keep in mind that Gruber has been writing about Apple for over two decades with almost universal praise. And so when he says it might be over, it's a signal worth paying attention to. And on top of all of this, Apple has been served with a lawsuit for false advertising regarding their Apple intelligence advertisements. The ads were pulled from YouTube last weekend in a final admission that none of the features they showed were coming anytime soon. Those ads were also a key topic at last week's All Hands meeting, with Walker placing the blame on the marketing department for wanting to showcase features that didn't properly function at the time. The lawsuit itself is whatever. Even if it gets settled, it's not going to make a dent in Apple's future. It's the fact that it exists, and that it's so clear and out in the open, that there is just nothing behind Apple's curtain when it comes to AI. So let's talk about whether Apple has a way out of this. And I guess I'll start with this point around why it matters. In short, Apple is uncomfortably close to becoming Nokia. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Nokia seemed like an unstoppable force in the mobile handset market. 20 years later, they're a historical footnote, although it is great that they're bringing back their brick phones for parents who don't want their kids lost in smartphone land. Right now, the iPhone is Apple's most important product. Also right now, AI is features on a phone. In five years, though, AI is the phone by which I mean AI dictates everything about our interactions with computers. AI eats hardware, user experience, and everything in between. And what that means is that people will leave Apple devices if those devices can't adapt. This is not just about giving people a reason to upgrade to iPhone 16, which is what the business logic of Apple intelligence is presented as right now. It's that by the time that iPhone 20 arrives, there will very likely be a whole host of new form factor devices that are genuinely competing and in many cases successfully competing with the phone as the control center for a new technological era. And indeed, that new era has a fundamentally different set of design principles that Apple is woefully out of sync with. The design principles of the AI era are about being less controlled and more emergent. Experiences are more probabilistic than deterministic. Apple's strategy in the past has always been release it late but perfectly, but when it comes to the jagged frontier of AI, there is no perfect. There's no consumer design that's going to be perfected. There is just raw power, an absolute deluge of new capacity and capabilities. You have to trust people to figure it out as they go and let experiences be messy as they do. 
This is unbelievably uncomfortable for a company like Apple, which has historically tried to control every single aspect of their experience. But I think in this new era, Apple is going to have to kill their darlings. There can be no sacred cows in Cupertino. So let's talk about the six Hail Marys that could get them into this game once again. Here's an honorable mention. Apple needs new product leadership from outside the company. And this one isn't on the actual list because it's not a Hail Mary, it's an absolute must. As you'll see, much of what I'm going to recommend would require them operating not only differently, but in a way that is completely at odds with how Apple has succeeded in the past. It's going to involve knockdown, drag out fights, and whoever is appointed to represent that disruptor view, Tim Cook himself needs to empower that person with near total power to win most of those arguments. So with that, let's move on to the actual list. Number one with a bullet, Apple needs to kill Siri. I don't mean that Apple needs to get out of the assistant game. I mean that Apple needs to destroy, bury, and plant some flowers on the grave of the Siri brand. The brand is at this point poison. Everything that is beloved about the Apple brand, the opposite is true for Siri. It has been a running joke for a decade. It represents the old way of doing things. It is a blaring reminder of Apple's failures. And Apple needs to kill it and put something new in its place. More specifically, they need to not wait to have something better. They need to put someone else's stuff that is better right now on the iPhone as the assistant. It doesn't matter if it's OpenAI at the beginning. In fact, if you've ever interacted with OpenAI's voice recognition as compared to Siri's, you would absolutely kill to make that trade. The calculus is simple here. There is more harm to Apple's brand from Siri being an utter piece of junk than there is from throwing their hands up, saying we screwed it, and OpenAI is better, so here's OpenAI. What I think that they're missing by not doing this is that Apple right now has platform lock-in with a ton of people. And that platform lock-in is not because it's such a pain to switch to Android or PC. The learning curve really isn't that high. Everyone's operating systems have gotten way better and more intuitive. The lock-in is because people genuinely like Apple experiences better. They like Apple hardware better. They like Apple's operating system better. Apple Silicon totally kicks butt. So why would you let software be the reason that people are forced to leave? Yes, in the long run, owning the end-to-end -end experience as Apple always wants to do will allow them to make a better overall experience. But to get back there, they're going to have to concede a little bit along the way. Killing the Siri brand would instantly signal that Apple is playing to win by 2025's rules and realities, not 2015's rules. Number two, the second Hail Mary that Apple could go for, buying Anthropic. Apple historically does not buy their way out of problems, so this would be another kill your darlings moment. So what would the logic for this be? If Apple wants to get back to owning the end-to-end -end experience, they need a foundation model, and frankly, at this point, they are absolutely, undisputedly too far behind to compete on that front. There's not enough compute to catch up. There's not enough talent to catch up. They're going to have to partner on model access. They might as well just buy. OpenAI is too expensive and too messy. XAI is Elon's fiefdom. Mistral honestly isn't an insane option either. It would certainly be a lot cheaper than Anthropic. But Anthropic feels better suited to me for a couple of reasons. Anthropic is at the cutting edge of code generation. Code generation is going to be key for agentic controls, for allowing agents, in other words, to figure out how to interface with computers. Agents interfacing with computers is perhaps the next big paradigm shift in user experience, and buying Anthropic gives them a leg there. The other reason is the model context protocol. MCP is becoming the default infrastructure for connecting AI and agents to data. It is currently racing ahead of all the other options and forcing companies like OpenAI to try to catch up with their agents' SDK. Now, nothing is won finally yet, but this is a core infrastructure play that could help Apple get back to owning the underlying experience. Now, where it would get messy is that Anthropic's MCP strategy is clearly more Android than it is iOS, trying to get everyone using this open protocol. Knowing Apple, they'd probably want to figure out a way to restrict access to MCP, but still, all of this adds up to why buying Anthropic could be more interesting than perhaps it seems at first. Now, ability to buy Anthropic is a whole different story. Apple does have about as much cash on hand as Anthropic was valued at in its latest round, but I don't particularly get the impression that Anthropic is looking for a sale anytime soon. Here's an alternative Hail Mary. Apple could buy DeepSeek and Manus. There's clearly something in the Chinese waters right now around not just models and efficiency and doing less with more, but around consumer experience. Remember, part of why DeepSeek exploded was that people just liked it better than the ChatGPT app. They liked the way that DeepSeek told you it was thinking. DeepSeek also had the right product instinct to give people access to the most performant model rather than limiting it by price and ability to pay. 
Manus, likewise, wasn't necessarily innovating on the underlying model, but was wiring the agentic system together in ways that other people hadn't quite figured out, making it a much better, more performant experience on the way. So between the fact that these companies are moving blisteringly fast and they seem to have really, really good consumer product instincts, those are two attributes that are sorely needed in Cupertino right now. Honestly, this one isn't really even a Hail Mary. They should just try to do this as soon as humanly possible. Perhaps a little more Hail Mary-ish is that Apple could decide to go all in on designing the agent operating system. One can argue that at the foundation of Apple's success in the modern era is the fact that people love their operating systems. Most consumers wouldn't think of it like that, but they're intuitive, easy to use, easy to figure out what you're trying to do. And right now, we are about to witness the birth of an entire new category of computer users, which are, of course, the agents. There are going to be agent-to-computer interactions, agent-to-person interactions, and agent-to-agent -agent interactions, all of which are going to require a totally different type of UI. Specifically, they're going to require new interfaces that aren't just tweaked versions of human interfaces, and this is once again an opportunity to own the foundation. It seems like it's something that Apple could do well, especially if they bought someone like Anthropic. You'll notice that a lot of these Hail Marys involve trading that big pile of cash for some new talent and new blood, and the fifth Hail Mary is no different. With this one, I'm suggesting buy 11 labs, and straight up, and I mean yes, ruthlessly copy meta Ray-Bans. With the Ray-Bans, Meta is making a bet that pulling your phone out of your pocket every five seconds isn't necessarily people's best experience, and that there's going to be a lot of room for voice-mediated experiences in the future. The form factor of sunglasses, especially ones that people already like the design of, like the Ray-Ban, has worked really well. It's gotten meaningful consumer uptake, it's a popular product. And look, if nothing else, Apple makes great devices. They make great hardware. To compete in this area well, though, they would need to also have access to really deep knowledge of and capacity in voice AI and audio generation. What I would argue here is that it doesn't matter that Meta is leading this right now, and it doesn't matter if people accuse Apple of following. There is tons that Apple can take from their learnings from the Vision Pro experience. And honestly, it would be great to see Apple acknowledge, which pretty much every normal human who thinks about it does, that augmented reality experiences in which we're still interacting with the real world are likely to represent a much bigger total addressable market than experiences that require us to go into some new world stuck on our couches with a giant headset. Now, that could be my own bias showing through. But when it comes to Apple's big plays in the AI space, this is one that actually seems really well-suited to them if they have the right talent. And speaking of really well-suited to Apple, a final Hail Mary that they could take is buying figure and going all in on humanoid robotics. This path basically would accept a slow destruction of software and computing and reposition Apple as the command center for embodied AI. I think this is actually a lot less crazy than it seems. The innovation and disruption of the iPhone was understanding that mobile was going to represent this totally new paradigm, not just of computing, but of the way that people interacted with computers in the real world. Embodied AI, physical AI, robotics, this is a new generation of totally different types of computers interacting with the real world. Now, what makes this a little bit dicey is that Apple obviously could not pull off its car project, but they still have a lot of that latent talent there. It certainly needs new leadership. It needs people who aren't in the big tech nine to five hole. And Figure, who's currently raising at 29 or $30 billion, seems like a perfect fit in terms of both proven ability to execute, emergent leadership in the space, and the right price. Figure has also shifted off of their relationship from OpenAI, saying that when it comes to physical AI and embodied AI, you really need to own the experience end to end, which bing, 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 sounds a lot like Apple. Who knows, maybe even the leadership from a company like Figure could end up being that disruptor from outside that Apple so clearly and sorely needs. So with all of this said, do I think Apple is going to actually do any of this? I do not. I think that Tim Cook has been an incredible steward for a lot of Steve Jobs' legacy, but we are now officially in the period where the solid operator manager CEO is out of their depth and lost in the dogmas of the quiet past while the stormy present swirls around them, leaving them farther and farther behind. I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of strong feelings about this one, so I'm excited to see what you think. Does Apple have a chance? Am I overstating how far behind they are? Are there other strategies that you think are better than the ones I've suggested here? Share your thoughts in the comments, and we will keep an eye on the situation. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.